first of all, I just wanted to say thanks for uh, introing the film and giving the instruction to play it loud last night. Oh, yeah, no worries. Um, it starts really intense, and it starts really fucking intense, actually, to be, <laughs> to be honest, and that maintains. So I was curious, what do you think the perfect preparation to go into this film is with the way it comes out of the gate so fast? Yeah, look, I, I would love it if people could try and get themselves into IMAX and watching this film, or VMAX, or you know, um, somewhere where they they have Dolby uh, Dolby Atmos or uh, a, uh, a a good quality sound system because sound is so important in this movie. Um, it's so immersive. The first uh, fifteen minutes of the film um, starts with this, with this big aerial battle sequence, which is really intense, and I think part of that is is so much to do with the sound design. Um, the other way you need to prepare is that you uh, you need to prepare for um, the unexpected. It's uh, it's it's not going to be your average war movie. It starts off um, with Operation Overlord on D-Day in World War II. We follow these paratroopers uh, as they're um, parachuted behind enemy lines in Normandy, France. But when they get there to their mission, they've got to take out this radio tower. Uh, um, they realize that um, nothing is what it seems. There's something odd and strange going on in this town. And under the church, there's this uh, Nazi lab where they're doing these crazy experiments. And that's where it turns into purely pure fiction and com you know, completely bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first time I've ever heard a director call his own film completely bonkers. I think the film is perfect for everyone except my mom and dad. <laughs> You know, <laughs> honestly, uh, it, it's one of those films that is not, a, it's not afraid to entertain. You know, it is spectacular, it's fun, it's out there, it's outrageous, it's bonkers. It's like you said earlier, it's like Indiana Jones on acid. It's here to entertain and it's loud and it's rowdy. And that's what I love about it. And that's the reason why I think hopefully it deserves a big audience because it's not your typical Hollywood film. You know, it's not another one of those, you know, and I like it. You know, when you, you know when you go to a film and you're surprised, uh, that's, and you, have, you come out with a big smile on your face, that's yeah. what I want people to walk out of my film feeling. Yeah. You know, like, they, 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 yeah, that's, that's, that's the goal, that's the aim, that's the, that's the one of every filmmaker. When their ears and eyes are bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you're no stranger to over-the-top performances. Uh, <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, <laughs> you know, is, that, is that a compliment or a little? <laughs> you can take that either, any any way you want. All right. It's a compliment. It's, it's a compliment. It's All right. A, uh, because all else, I'm going to take you. <laughs> yeah, good. Fair enough. Um, but there's there's over the top, and then there's SS over the top. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that's a really particular kind of uh, presence in a film. Yeah. Uh, I can tell you, he even edited it down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a couple of really uh, like strong visual looks in the film. Yeah. Uh, uh, like visual aesthetics. Yeah. Um, what was it like for you each time you sort of first saw yourself as you were going to be on camera? First of all, it's a great question because one of the things you learn at a school, and I attended a drama school for four years, is that when you get a mask, you get 10% more as an actor. You give yourself freedom to actually do a little bit more than you would with your own face and your own stature and your own body, right? Because you feel liberated, you feel free, you feel like you can do whatever you want. And this character doesn't have any limits. So why should I be the guy that set limits for a character who's so far out? We can all agree on Nazis are evil. That's the reason why I try to do him a little bit more charming. That's the reason why I try to do the guy on Game of Thrones a little bit more charming because a one-dimensional villain will always reflect on the uh, protagonist being one-dimensional. Do you get what I'm saying? So the more nuances we can get to an evil Nazi zombie, the more nuances the heroes are gonna have in the film. What is this? A thousand-year army. These thousand-year soldiers. We've got a certain expectation, I guess, of what Nazis look like on screen, right? Because we've had like decades and decades of these characters being like, you know, they've almost become pop culture staples in a way, right? That's mm. quite far from the actual like uh, horrible reality of those characters. Is that something you have to keep in mind as, as, as a storyteller, as an actor, that they're sort of inhabiting both a historical real villain that's got, you know, uh, 
incredibly real life evil overtones and also something that's sort of part of our storytelling fabric at the same time well it, um you know uh, it's completely fictional so um you can allow yourself to to um uh you know be a little bit more heightened you know, it's a heightened reality but uh y- i don't even honestly i yeah. don't think we could ever 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 top reality that's not possible because in reality they killed six million jews we didn't do that <laughs> we're just here to entertain you know so you're playing with some genres, you're playing with some terms that people in the audience will understand. We're playing with a fictional story that we want to entertain with. And in this case, in my case, I'm doing an evil Nazi. This is not a remake of The Untergang, where you need to have sympathy for Hitler. It's not that kind of film. This is different, you know? And I think within the premise that we wanted to create our film, or your film, I think we were here to entertain with a fucked up crazy story, like we said. Yeah, Indiana Jones on acid. Yeah, and as you know, there's uh, um, crazy, uh, you know, um, super soldiers and and uh, completely supernatural uh, elements to the to to the film, um, which uh, you know is completely fantastical. Yeah. Just as you were, as I I think it was a compliment when I said over the top, but I'm still not entirely sure uh, just with, just as your performance is like that you're not uh, sure I'm, I'm not sure I think we're both a little bit unclear about this <laughs> it's a grey uh, area here you, yeah. your, uh, some of your choices in uh, you know what you, sh- what you show on screen in terms of awesome gore yeah. and uh, uh, unexpectedly graphic violence yeah. um, was it important for you to push the boat out really far with that as well yeah I wanted to be really intense for the audience and uh, you know uh, I wanted to make it as feel as um, you know um practical and in-camera for them and you know I think people will really respond to uh, you know stuff that's uh, has a more practical sensibility to it like we did a lot of the um, the creature stuff um, that's all in camera special effects makeup for instance there's this guy who snaps his his um, neck back in the movie and uh, violently and the way we did that we did the old school puppetry and uh, and animatronics and you know, it's for me. There's a texture you can't replicate. There's a there's a feeling you can't replicate with CGI. Chase, he's dead. Chase, how do you feel? I feel really good. Uh, holy Christ! What are you doing to me? Overlord. <laughs>